What's up, Opportunity Cost Investors? This is the first video to ever reveal an expected return using Yada Savings. And I know there've been videos and posts about it in the past, but they're actually all wrong. Even now, the interest rate is still like around 2%, give or take, so it's worth it. And in this video, I'm gonna show you why and then show you what the actual expected return is. First though, for those who don't know, Yada Savings is a savings account lottery hybrid where you earn 0.20% APY on the money you save. And then you also get lottery tickets where you can win prizes based on how much money you have deposited, how many referrals you make, and a few other incentives that they have on their platform. All right, to kick things off, let's start with some statistics, but in plain language. There are actually two expected returns. And don't worry, I'm not pinning all these videos that I say are wrong on a technicality. They're actually wrong on both expected returns. But let's imagine you could pay $1 to roll a die. If it lands on a one, two, three, four, or five, you're gonna gain $100. But if it lands on a six, you lose $1 billion. In this example, one expected return that you can say is a $100 gain. Except we don't actually use dollars, we're gonna use percentages. And to convert that to a percentage, we're gonna use this formula here and say you got a 9,900% return. This return, this expected value return, I'm gonna call the common expected return because it's the occurrence that you would find most common. Five out of the six times, you'll make the 9,900% gain. So that's the expected return, that's the most common occurrence. Then you have the second expected return, which is the reason why none of you watching this video, I would hope, would not roll the die and take my offer. It's called the Kelly Criterion, and the formula looks like this, where five times out of six, you're going to make a 9,900% return, and one times out of six, you're going to lose $1 billion, except I converted the loss of a billion dollars into a percentage using the formula that I just showed. If you add these together, you get the Kelly Criterion. In plain English, this means if you were to play my die game an infinite amount of times, this is the return, this negative 16-ish billion percent return is what you would expect to eventually get to. Said another way, it means if you can find in another alternative, something that gains you at least one percentage better or 0.001% better, something better than this negative 16 billion percent return, go with the alternative, which I hope is everybody. And this is where everyone goes wrong and everything falls apart. These equations that people will use don't account for the time value of money. For example, if I told you you had two options with my die example, you could either roll the die once a day or once a decade, it's pretty easy for us to see that we can have two completely different returns, but the formulas don't account for that. And that's where everyone goes wrong. It ignores the time value of money. One example where people ignore the time value of money is when you see people use average winnings per ticket. And the problem with that is actually pretty easy to explain. Imagine you played a lottery once a year and after 20 years, you won $20 million. Under this average winnings per ticket, it's as if you won $1 million per year, which in finance we know is completely different than what happened, which was you won nothing and then you won $20 million after 20 years. There's that time value of money that the average winnings per ticket doesn't adjust for. Another way people ignore the time value of money is after they find an average winnings per ticket or whatever they do with the statistics, they'll tack on the 0.20% APY at the end, which is lazy and wrong because the timing of the winnings that you have affect how much interest you make. But all right, all right, all right. I know, we all just wanna know Yada's expected value and how to do it appropriately. So let's get into it, let's go. To actually find the rate of return on something like Yada Savings, we'll have to use what's called the Monte Cristo simulation. As it pertains to what we wanna do, we would simulate someone using Yada Savings for as long as possible, find the money weighted rate of return, and then do that as many times as possible, collecting the money weighted rate of return. We'll get this probability distribution and then we'll find out what the expected return is. Mark Rober has a wonderful clip on the Monte Cristo simulation that we'll play for you here. Well, here's an example of a random event happening. There's 256 little BBs in here. Okay. And when they drop through the hopper, they always make this normal curve. It's a random process. But you do know that 
the group will always look like this. It's fascinating. And what's also fascinating is that anytime you have a bell curve like this in real life, it always breaks down to the percentages you see here for each standard deviation away from the average in the middle. So for example, every time you flip that card over, about 38% of the BBs will always fall into the chute in the middle. The perfect Yada Monte Cristo simulation would ideally be that someone used Yada savings for 8 billion weeks because that's the chances for the grand prize and statistically they would win at some point. Then you would want to do that 8 billion times so that way you have every instance statistically from someone who won it at the very beginning to someone who won it at the very end and everyone in between. Fortunately for you, you don't have to do any of that because I've already done the work for us. Kinda. Because that's where my expertise really hits the wall. All right, so I'm a finance nerd and I only learned how to code just for this video. So the problem is I made a code for this, but the coding is laughable and sad enough to make an onion cry. So good news, the math is sound. The bad news is it takes so long to run that after running my computer for two days straight, I was only able to simulate someone using Yada savings for a hundred years, 60,000 times. And it's pretty slow. Wait for it. Wait for it. Yep, we'd be here forever. So if anyone wants to check out the code to make it more efficient, please do so. It's linked in the description. Or if you want to laugh, you can check it out too. But with the results we came out with, I think we have something really awesome here. Although I need to mention some nuances and some of the variables before I tell you the expected return, which is coming up and I'm super excited to release for the first time ever on the internet. So the variables, we don't know how much someone started with. We don't know if there's contributions or withdrawals. We don't know if they did the sign up bonus and Yada on the bigger prizes actually splits it with people who also won it. And we don't know how much competition there is. So to combat this, I decided I was gonna make a best case and a worst case scenario. In the best case scenario, you get a sign up bonus and you don't have to split the prizes with anybody. In the worst case scenario, no sign up bonus and you have to split it infinitely, meaning those bigger prizes you don't even get to take home. And in both cases, we decided we were gonna start with $25 and make no contribution to withdrawals. Those things make a difference and I just had the same. And the results are in. Under the worst case scenario, the common expected return, which again is the one we'd expect to see the most often, it is about 1.38%. Then for the Kelly Criterion, or the weighted expected return, we can expect to see about 1.29%. Then for the best case scenario, the common expected return is about 1.32% and the Kelly Criterion, or the weighted expected return, is about 1.56%. And the reason why there's a decrease from the worst case to the best case common expected return is because those grand prizes that were split among many people in the best case scenario aren't split with anybody anymore. So you actually have instances where you get higher rewards, meaning that there's a decrease for the chances of the lower expected return. This is reflected in the Kelly Criterion, which is why I recommend that's the rate people look at and use for opportunity cost. Then I would choose the conservative worst case scenario, meaning that my best guess at Yada's expected return is about 1.29%, which is amazing by banks at this time but it's much lower than most people think it is. Around 2% give or take. So there you have it. My best guess at Yada's expected return is 1.29% conservatively and under the variables we mentioned. Now, although I'm pretty happy with the results and I feel like it's a great step in the right direction, it's still not perfect yet. I need to mention that. I would like to see in the future that we get more iterations. People can put in their contributions and withdrawals and that people can input what they think is gonna be competitive in those split prizes. Are there gonna be a lot, little, they can input it however they see fit. So it's not perfect yet, but I feel like it's a step in the right direction. And I don't wanna sound like someone who said, this is the exact return. I wanna remain open-minded because it's not what you don't know that kills you, it's what you know for sure that just ain't so, just like we've seen the errors in other people's videos. Personally, I'm just gonna stick with Ally Bank because even the CEO of Yada Savings has said that he expects to see the expected return come down to be competitive with the likes of Ally Bank, Goldman Sachs, Marcus, and a few other ones like those ones. And if I had to calculate the expected return of any bank account on any given day, I'm just gonna stick with Ally Bank and I'm not even gonna try Yada. It's too complicated for me to understand. I can't even say complicated, complicated. 
But anyways, that's all I have for you in this video. I hope you found the content helpful. If you did, make sure you like that oh, smash yeah. button by stalking our subscriber count and Liberty Bell that notification icon. Thanks for watching. Until next time, and here comes the epilogue. So this is actually our second Yada Savings video. In our first video, we were reviewing the personal return of a YouTuber named Ask Sebi. The problem is, if you watch his video, it's very clear that he wants to provide a return to his audience that excludes referrals. The only problem is, is math actually more closely relates to one that includes referrals. And I wasn't the only one to pick up on this. Our friend Ying at Ying Credible Tips also suggested that Asebi was doing the wrong thing here, and we can prove it. In Sebastian's attempt to find his personal performance without referrals, he took all the winnings, found a yearly equivalent, and divided the sum of that by the sum of assets under management, which were tickets, referral or not, multiplied by 25, because you get $25 per one ticket. The problem with this is it spreads the winnings across referrals and non-referrals, making the analysis completely invalid. But in this example, you can see the whole picture, referrals and non-referral tickets. And instead of using Yada's lottery system, I figured I'd make it a little easier. On a one to 10 lottery system, if you get a one, you'll win 25 cents. According to Sebastian's math, you'll take the entire winnings, which is 25 cents, find the yearly equivalent, and divide it by 150, which is the total assets under management. This is gonna get you a positive return. However, if you look, if you exclude for the referrals, you actually made a 0% game. Conclusion, his method doesn't work. The funny part is that this Enron level math actually more closely mirrors that of a one that includes referrals because it doesn't properly discount it, but it doesn't even do that right either. Or else had he included the referrals in his performance, he would have gotten the over 2 million percent annualized gain that I found in the previous video for himself and the over 100 million percent gain for Mandy. In conclusion, it's currently impossible to figure out someone's personal return using Yada Savings without referrals. And if you try using a method like Ask Sebi, you're not going to properly money weight your returns and you're going to ignore the time value of money, which is why it's inaccurate as we've showed. So if you try to watch Ask Sebi's video, his statistical return is wrong and his personal return is wrong. On our video, the first one we had, our personal return review of including referrals is correct. To do it without referrals is impossible. And if you wanna know the statistical and the expected returns, we've talked about the Monte Cristo simulation in this video, and that's the return I would use. And it's very, very close, although it's not perfect. So I just wanted to apologize once again and set the record straight. I tried to rush the video and I sacrificed the quality and the integrity of it. So I really apologize for that. And I'll make sure to take my time and make sure we get the details straight. So thanks for watching and until next time.